On this episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence, we are talking about the it factor. It's beyond your talent, your knowledge, your skill. What is the it factor and how can you get it? Stay tuned. Welcome to Unleash Your Audacious Confidence on Win Win Women TV. This show is all about sharing the tips, tools, and techniques that will allow you to step boldly in the direction of your dreams despite your feelings, fears, or past failures, to imagine what's possible for yourself and live the life you deserve. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV. I'm your host, Alicia Khoury. And on today's show, we're going to be tackling confidence, the it factor. Have you ever heard that before? Like this one has it and that one doesn't have it. You know, sometimes when you watch some of these uh, reality talent competition shows, like uh, the singing competition shows or talent competition shows, and sometimes the judges will say that this person has it, it, and sometimes they'll say, you know, they have, they have talent, but there, something was just missing. Like, they didn't have that it factor. So let's talk a little bit about the it factor. But before we dive into the content today, I want to encourage you to go to winwinwomen.com. Check it out. There are so many different show hosts there that are providing just a wealth of information and knowledge and uh, just things that you can action on. And I just want to encourage you to go check out the other show hosts on winwinwomen.com. It it's it's really a place of community for women by women. All right. Now, I'm going to share some simple steps for you, some simple things that you can do and you can start doing. Uh, and at the end of this, I'm also going to share an opportunity. I've never done this before in the show, but I'm going to share an opportunity for you. I've been doing this show now for almost... Uh, It's been two and a half, almost three years I've been doing this show and I've never, ever done this before. But stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give you an amazing opportunity uh, at the end of this. So confidence, right? The, the, The it factor. How do you determine your it factor? So I went to AI and I asked, what is the it factor? And this is this is what they said. There are five key components to the it factor. There is charisma, confidence, charm, uniqueness, and presence. Those five five uh, elements. In my opinion, it's not five elements to the it factor. To me, confidence is what it is. And those other four are a part of that confidence. It's not five separate things. I think Confidence is the umbrella and and those other four things, charisma, uniqueness, presence, and charm are part of it. So we're going to talk about three different areas in the show today. So let's get started. Let's let's dive into this. You know, we all have um, three different parts of us, spirit, soul, and body. And if you've heard this show before, watched this show before, you know I talk about the three different parts of our mind, our con- uh, cognitive, affective, and cognitive. So we are three parts, spirit, soul, and body. We have three parts of our mind. But within those, uh, the mind is also our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. So we're going to tackle, I'm going to try within <laughs> the, the short time that we have together to touch on all those different elements in a way that makes sense to you. All right. So just follow along, just stick with me. I, I, I promise I'm going to try to make sense of it all. But when we look at the um, conscious and subconscious mind, right? So keep in the back of, keep in the back of your mind, these three different parts, spirit, soul, and body, keep in the back of your mind, the three parts of our mind, uh, cognitive, affective, and cognitive. But I'm going to first start our first first part of this is we're going to talk about paradigms and beliefs. So that's dealing with our conscious and subconscious mind. Research has shared that we're conscious probably five percent of the time. That's our 
that's in our consciousness. That's our conscious state of mind. And uh, 95 percent, 90 to 95 percent of the time, our subconscious mind is running in the background and our subconscious mind is responsible for a lot of automatic things that we do. Our breathing, our heart beating, uh, speaking, eating, seeing, touching, tasting, you know, all the, the things driving, it becomes embedded in our subconscious that we don't have to actively think about it. We don't have to actively access those things. Uh, and so there's a lot going on in our subconscious mind. And from the age of zero to seven years old, our belief systems are implanted, our paradigms, which is a series of beliefs that we have. It is, uh, it is, I guess, imparted into, if I could say it that way, imparted into our subconscious mind. Because from zero to seven, we really don't have reasoning yet. We really don't have the ability to reject ideas or reject um things from being embedded into our subconscious mind by our environment. So our belief system, our paradigms are really uh, developed from people around us, the people that are around us as we grow up, mostly like parents, aunts, uncles, teachers, siblings, cousins, you know, those, those people are influencing and feeding our belief system. So our belief systems aren't things that we consciously built. Our belief systems are things that were um, given to us. And so when we look into uh, how our paradigms are built, a lot of times that impacts whether or not our confidence is high or low. Um, Again, that goes into, you know, our uniqueness. Schools tend to, you know, we start preschool, we start daycare, we start, uh, sometimes our kids are started really early in life in this environment where their uniqueness isn't, isn't encouraged, but rather we're trying to streamline everybody because we have to control the masses. So anything that's an outlier is being funneled and channeled into a way of being. So our uniqueness is, is from an early age, uh, unless you really stand out, unless you're a really standout kid, your, your uniqueness is being systematically drummed out of you. All right? So how do we recapture our uniqueness if it's been drummed out of us? When there are sort of savant children who from three years old can sing or play golf or do something really remarkable, those things are nurtured. But if those talents and those gifts and those uniqueness, those unique qualities aren't um, recognized as for what they are, really, they're not recognized as a gift or a talent, then it's the idea is that you're not supposed to be that way. That's not a way of being. And so some of our unique gifts have been buried or suppressed throughout our lives. And this is where this second part comes in. So we need to, number one, examine our paradigms and beliefs. And then the second part comes in where we're, we're talking about what is the truth about us. Um, and again, I'm referring it to our it factor, our you know charisma, our charm, our uniqueness, our presence that embody our confidence. Where does that come from? So I was listening to Bob Proctor. I don't know if you've ever heard of him before, but you should check it out. And um, I was listening to his audio book the other day and he said something very powerful in it. And I'm just, I just want to make sure I get the title of the book correct for you. So I'm pulling it up on Audible right now. It says, change your paradigm, change your life. That's, that's it. Um, I didn't want to botch the name of the book. So I want to make sure I got that right. So I was listening to this audiobook, Change Your Paradigms, Change Your Life by Dr. Bob Proctor. And he said this that was so profound. 
he said that the only places to get the truth, there are only two places to get the truth. Number one is theology, and number two is science. I was like, wow, you know, that's right. And science these days is proving that God exists, is proving the, the fact that there is a creator that created all of us. So if we look at theology, not religion, if we look at the, the, the foundation of theology and we can find ourselves, we can find who we are in that, then we can use science to really discover our uniqueness and how we were, how we were designed because each of us were designed uniquely and we can use science to, to identify and quantify and qualify those unique qualities in each one of us. And this is why I believe I'm so passionate. When he said that, it really spoke to me because I'm so passionate about brain science, about pe individuals understanding themselves from that, that perspective. But I also have a degree in theology. Not a lot of people know that. I have a degree in theology. And so when he said that, it was like, what? So I am a truth seeker. I've been seeking truth about myself and about individuals all my life. So I found that was really spectacular. So those are the only two places to find truth. So this is why I'm certified in several different brain science tools to help me understand people better, because that's the work that I do in helping individuals understand themselves and understand their uniqueness, uniqueness and work together in, uh, in teams and build their own leadership based on their self-awareness right? And your confidence comes from knowing the first step in the seven steps to audacious confidence. If you've read my book, if you've read that ebook, or if you haven't, go to alicia360.com and uh, under free gift, you can download that free gift of the seven secrets to audacious confidence. But the first secret is know yourself and love yourself. How can you really know yourself if you don't do a deep dive and let me tell you, you could study yourself your whole life and still not understand the full length, breadth, and, and depth because we have a creator that is so expansive that created each one of us uniquely. So know yourself and love yourself. So I use the brain science and the theology to blend those two and help you understand yourself on a deeper level. Now, the third component to that is that subconscious mind. Because if you don't understand what's running in the background of your mind and you don't and you don't know that and you don't seek that out, you could be limiting yourself in so many areas, including in your confidence. So we want to unpack all of that. We wanna um, bring more awareness to what's running in that back, you know, in the, the, the recesses of our minds that, started from when we were kids, when we were, you know, just, just we little ones that was implanted in us. I remember for me, believing certain things about myself. And then later on, when I dug into these different tools, understanding that they actually weren't weaknesses, they actually weren't uh, a wrong way of being, which I was told most of my childhood that that was not the way to be. Those were actually my gifts. Those were actually my strengths. Um, and I'll break some of those down for you in a minute. But I just want to get to the the um, that the third thing. Actually, I'll break it down in the third thing because discovering your it factor really lies in the peeling back the layers and understanding of what's happening in your subconscious, understanding the science of your brain and how you were created. And then the third thing is understanding who has created you and operating within those laws of the universe, of, of how the universe was created. So the third part of discovering your it, it factor is really about learning more about yourself and I like to say it this way, imagining, like, <laughs> Zoom keeps raising my hand for me, imagining 
what it would look like using our imagination to imagine what it would look like if I was the most confident version of myself. What does that actually look like? And that taps into actually the six of the seven steps. Secrets, sorry. Six of the seven secrets. So go check out the book, alicia360.com. And number six, where you can imagine what that looks like, right? So the way to imagine what that looks like is to understand your zone of genius. Really start unpacking what the zone of genius looks like. So that's the third thing, imagining what your most confident self looks like, but from the perspective of knowing yourself a little bit deeper by understanding your zone of genius. And that's where I'm going to bring in those three different parts of the mind, the cognitive, affective, and conative. Now, I deal with uh, assessments in the cognitive, in the affect, and the conative parts of the mind so that we can really help not just our clients, but friends, family members. We really, I, I, I let me tell you about me in a bit, uh, uh, how I was designed, right? how my brain operates. So understanding myself more, gaining that knowledge in the science part of who I am really up-leveled my confidence. Because like I said a minute ago, uh, I thought this was not the way to be. I was told I was not supposed to be this way. And it was kind of drummed out of me. So I had to suppress a lot of my natural instincts for how I need to solve problems, how I need to be, how I need to grow, how I need to Uh, accomplished things that was suppressed. And only through doing this work did I allow that to blossom and then grow. And now um, I've built confidence around that. So it, it's become this charismatic uh, presence for me. And, and it's really fascinating. And I've worked with people and it's, it's done the same thing for them too. So uh, let's talk a little bit. Okay, let me share with you the breakdown of me and how this has worked. So I learned the certain things that I used to do when I was younger and told that that's not the way to be. Like part of my natural makeup is experimenting. Try, fail, try, fail. I am a creator and an experimenter. Everything, every assessment that I've taken Those things uh, are on the forefront, creativity, experimentation, um, uh, innovating, future thinking, big picture thinker. Um, I'm, I'm that person that wants to develop others. So I'm always looking for ways, not just to develop myself, but how can I take this and apply it to someone else to make their life better or to help them grow or to help them in some way. So this idea of trying and failing, starting things and moving on from other things, you know, I've been told it was like bright, shiny object syndrome. I was told that I quit everything. I'm such a quitter. Uh, I, that's what I grew up believing actually, since I was like five years old, my mother did not want to sign me up for gymnastics because she said I was a quitter. I quit everything. I was five years old. It wasn't that I quit everything. It's because I experiment and I try. And if I try something and it didn't quite work out the way, I I flip it and I try it a different way or I try something a different way. To other people, it looked like I was quitting. I was, but very quickly I recognize, all right, this doesn't work. So I I I can very quickly um, run through different iterations of something because I can see very quickly that it's not going to work. Like, I can see this. I didn't know that that was a special gift that I could see, you know, down the line and say, okay, I started this here. This direction is not going to work. Let's pivot really quickly. So change. I'm very adaptable to change. I help actually organizations and companies change really quickly because that's innate to me to, 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 help you see a different way, a different path really quickly and uh, change. So during the pandemic, that wasn't difficult for me to to uh, to change really quickly because my brain naturally 
looks at that. I brainstorm ideas really quickly. So I can come up with 10 different ideas for something really fast. Not that we're going to use all 10, but I'm willing to experiment. I'm willing. I, I, I am that risk taker where I'm willing to, to try and experiment. But throughout my life, I was told that's not the right way to be, that you have to stick with something, that you have to get there and you have to stick with it. And only then can you be successful. And it was frustrating. It was painful. It was, I felt like that's not, that, that did not work for me. And it was, it was very stressful to do, to try to be a way that I wasn't naturally designed to be. And so learning these things about myself by taking some of these assessments, I was like, oh, that's why I was so frustrated all the time because I was doing it in a way that wasn't natural, that that my brain wasn't naturally uh, designed to do it that way. So learning these things about me, learning why it is that I'm always looking and listening to people and, and finding different ways to help them elevate, that's a natural inclination for me. And I always thought that's how everybody was, but it's not. That's unique to how I see the world. I see the world in terms of growth. Like I'm an out of the box thinker. If there's a box, I'm outside of it. I'm not getting in the box and thinking like everybody else. I'm like, how can I do this differently? How can I think about this differently? How can I change this around? Well, growing up, I thought that's how I was naturally doing things. And I was told that's not the way to be. So my belief system, right back to that subconscious beliefs, what was embedded in me was the way I naturally am is not the way to be. And I had to try really hard to not be me because being me was wrong. And I had to learn that that belief was actually what was wrong. So I'm, I'm running out of time on this. So I hope you understand that. So the three different areas that I want you to look at and focus on is number one, you have to like re-examine your beliefs about yourself and what are what things are holding you back, right? Because those things you have to you have to let it bubble up to the surface so it gets to your conscious mind. So if you do something, you're like, why did I do that? Why did I do it that way? You know, let those things bubble up to the surface and start questioning them and asking yourself why. Why are you doing things a certain way, especially if it feels uncomfortable, if it doesn't feel natural to you? The second thing is you have to, you have to investigate through the truth, the areas of truth, science and theology. What does the theology say about me? What does science say about me? Build self-awareness about that. And that's going to help, number one, that's going to help you really identify those strengths, those unique qualities that, that position you to be more confident in yourself. And then the third thing is imagine what it would look like if you were confident by understanding your zone of genius. Um, when you look at different entertainers, and I want to say like Michael Jackson and Diana Ross, naturally, they're, they're very shy people. And I don't like the word shy, but they're very, they're introverted people. They don't like speaking out in public. They don't like being in public. But you get them on the stage, you get them in their element, their charisma, their charm, their presence, their unique abilities shine bright. And that's what you need to find. Where is your stage? Where is that environment that really makes you shine? That's what we have to find. But you can only find that by understanding your uniqueness. All right, by digging into the science of that. So I did tell you that I had something special that I had never done before. So here it is. I'm 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 actually creating, I've created a retreat. It's going to be um, in Mexico. I, I, I hesitate to say too much about it because uh, it's in the development stages, but I wanted to share that I'm doing this retreat to help you boost your confidence, like really unleash your confidence. I think it's time. I've been doing the show for um, almost three years. And I think it's time for me to start putting these pieces together so that you can come experience it with me where I could work with you and a handful of others really one-on-one -on -one to dig into the science, dig into the theology of who you are 
find your uniqueness, find your zone of genius and allow you to unleash your audacious confidence. So if you want to know more about that and you want to join me, if you really want to join me on this, go to alicia360.com, go under contact me, you know, like my contact area and send me a WhatsApp. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, send me a WhatsApp message. I'm only taking a, a small group of people send me a WhatsApp message and say, I'm interested in the retreat. And I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to get on a call with you. Like I said, we're in the development stages of it, get a little bit more information from you and, and share a little bit more about it with you. But I'm really excited to do it. It's going to be closer to um, the fourth quarter of this year. Dates aren't solidified yet, but I'm really excited to do this. Uh, because I think this work really will speak to the core of who I am in helping to develop others, helping to bring out your unique ability to see you shine and glow. Um, that's what I was put on this earth to do, to, to, to really build others up. And I want to take the, the knowledge and the skill that I've, I've, really experienced and learned. I have all these different tools that I've learned and impart it to you so that you can find your it factor and you can shine bright, brighter than you ever thought possible. All right. So with that, I'm just going to encourage you to do one thing, one thing, to be bold and to be brave and step out with audacious confidence. Until next time, this is Alicia Curry saying bye for now. And I'll see you on another episode of Unleash Your Audacious Confidence here on Win Win Women TV. Mm -hmm.